Three, two, one. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to... This is episode one. We did do a pilot episode, I guess, over on JCS Gaming. And it, I have already done an epi- a couple episodes of this show years ago, but now I decided to make it, you know, a thing every week. So, pretty happy uh, to be doing this. Unfortunately, uh, I-, I don't know if Jake DeMarco forgot or he fell asleep. But uh, he ain't here, so maybe he'll wake up or maybe he'll realize I'm live. But I think he might have died or something, or passed out or something. But we are here anyway with D Moon, Himmel God, Leah, and myself. And this is uh, going to be our podcast, which is the theme today is the same theme I had a couple years ago. It is the best controller. What are the best controllers for this for whatever system? What's your favorite controller? Uh, why, you know, we're going to talk about all that stuff and kind of reminisce about the controllers of the past and what could happen in the future with controllers and all kinds of that stuff. And then our kind of our side conversation was going to be about Battle Royale. So we'll talk a little bit about Battle Royale games and, you know, where that's going to go. That'll be sort of the second topic. But right now, depending on how long this, this one takes, we'll talk about our favorite controllers or whatever. And you guys in the chat, um, if you guys want, you guys can, uh, can super chat uh, tell us what your favorite one is or whatever that is and we'll try to acknowledge it if we can get a chance to do that so try to super chat it so we see it um and that's it i will tell i will go to uh let's go to d moon first uh because he was the former champion i feel like the former champion should i guess (laughs) speak first i don't know give you some kind of consolation or something i don't know well d moon (laughs) packed that belt yet did you pack it up? No, it's already packed up, man, with oh, air fresheners yeah, and it everything, man. Up, take it out and just go ahead and put it out for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I got to give it uh, to him, though, because he'll probably get it out faster than anybody else. Like, me and Ken took two weeks each together, and then everybody else. I mean, you know, he's pretty good, I bet. If he's already got it packed, he's already ahead of both He's of already us. ahead of us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so I guess we're starting off with the uh, favorite controllers, right? Yeah, like, what's um, your favorite controller? So, I mean, this is probably going to be a little off for some people, but to me, one of the best controllers I've ever used was the Nintendo GameCube. Um, So, before I used to play um, Super Smash Brothers, I used to play that game competitively a lot with my friends. And for some reason, I don't know, before, this is before the Xbox controller came out, because, I mean, I'm pretty sure a lot of people love the Xbox controller, the 360. And, well, rightfully so. I mean, that's probably, like, my second favorite controller of all time. But the GameCube controller, I don't know, man. It was the first to really like. Um, it was the first to really put the analog sticks in like, you know, a really unique uh, position, I guess, if you will. Um, you had the the top right, um, the top analog stick on the left, and then the bottom right. I don't know, just the positioning of it. I don't know. It felt so good to me. Um, well, and playing Super Smash Brothers with it, it was just like it was like you cannot go back to any other controller with this. I will tell you, I did not play the GameCube much. I didn't play it much. Like I was already out of Nintendo at that point. But what I will say is, man, when I put my hands on that controller, I don't know what it was, but your hands just like melted into that thing. Yeah, yeah I loved that controller. That was one of the ones I was gonna bring up tonight. Was that that controller? Yeah, it's it's so funny too because like even nowadays, like with the new you know Nintendo consoles, they still announce like for specifically for Super Smash Brother games, like they still have like adapters so that you can use GameCube controllers because like you know professional players that you know pro Smash players, I guess if you call them, they still prefer that controller over anything else. I mean that just goes to show you how great it is. I mean yeah, it's that's my personal favorite to be completely honest with you. Yeah, but when you look at like um, what was it the new Smash Brothers that's going to be coming out this year, and yeah. they added the uh, compatibility to use GameCube controllers with it, I thought that was a really big deal. So, you know, a lot of people are used to that because that was one of the better games was the one that was on the GameCube. So, uh, mm-hmm. that was huge. And hopefully, they have like a special. It looked like they had a special controller showing during the direct. Uh, they showed the GameCube uh, version of the controller for Super Smash Brothers. So, you know, another game that was great for that controller was Soul Calibur. Oh yes, I agree. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You could really 
Like, I don't know what it was like. for it, The only thing I could imagine that control was difficult for people is if they had big hands. Like, really big hands. I don't know. I, I mean, huge hands, and GameCube controller is my favorite of all time. Oh, so there you yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. That, we started with it was GameCube. Like, it was really, it's like even the, um, I feel like, I, I, I'm think, I hope I'm remembering correctly, even like the right bumper and left bumper had like sort of a sensitivity to them. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I'd play like Super Mario Sunshine and like you could like you had like this uh, water pack, and Flood. so like you could, you could yeah you had like different intensities that you could like use and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. You know what's funny too? You know what's funny too? Like competitive Smash players used to open up the controller and take out the springs on the bumper just to get a faster reaction to it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if like you guys ever did that. I actually did that too, and it actually works. It, I don't know, man. That that controller was just like too good. I I love the GameCube controller. I yeah. never got that crazy into Smash. Like I I followed the subreddit, and there's just so much crazy shit that the technical shit people do is insane. I just like smashing people, well, stupid friends. Like I even it. said, Troy. I told them, Troy. <laughs> Troy, I play. I I barely. I I might have played GameCube a total of like I don't know. If, 12 hours in my life. I've played GameCube probably 12 hours in my entire life. You missed out. Well, no. you know what it was? I was so busy playing PlayStation 1 or whatever was... Whatever. I played that too. I played all of them. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, I don't know. Like, I didn't have every system. The difference system. is you were too busy having a life while I stayed home and well, just played, like, every system that there was. Well, <laughs> but, but the thing is, like, I knew that controller felt good. Like, I loved it. Generated G53 hit a super chat. Hit us with a super chat. Said, my favorite will always be the N64. We'll talk about that probably in a few minutes, oh, Generated. God. Um, that's another, obviously, another Nintendo. But when did you Game when did GameCube come out? Ninety nine, two thousand, yeah, two thousand one, two thousand two. See, I'll, because I was see, I would, I would number one. Oh, I was playing Xbox. That's why I was fucking. <laughs> I was all in on Halo. I was at LAN parties for Halo. I had no time for GameCube. I was like, oh, that's a kid's toy. I'm I'm playing Halo. <laughs> you know, I'm seriously. That's what it was. I was like, that's kid stuff. I'm at a LAN party right now. <laughs> like I'm dead serious. Like that's what it was. I I know that that's what it was. I went to well, I parties. You, I did the same thing. What Brian? I was the same way. Yeah. I was at a land party playing Halo, dude. That was the shit back in the day, man. Dude, that was so cool. I would skip school. Like I would go out late. One night I took my car. You know when I when I got my car for the first time. You know got my license and everything. And I remember just sneaking out of the house, jumping in the car, throwing t fucking TV and Xbox in the car, and driving to somebody's <laughs> house. Um, you know what it, you know what it was too though with the GameCube. I don't remember on launch date how much it cost, but I do remember like for a longest time it was like a hundred bucks. That's another thing that was a great selling point too. I don't know. It was wow. like hundred two, not even two hundred. I think it was yeah, it was like around a hundred bucks. Yeah, I remember for the longest time it was a hundred bucks. Part of the reason I got it is because they had the Star Wars game on there, so I wanted the Star Wars game. <laughs> yeah, I think I had that on. Um... I think that was out for a Xbox. It was Knights of the Old Republic and also well, had, um, Obi Wan Kenobi uh, too. Was really good. I thought. Oh. Right. Yeah. They had the uh, what's what called the sequel to Rogue, Rogue Squadron. It was, and wow. I was like, yeah, I'm hooked for that game. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what. Yeah, uh, I was I was all on Nintendo growing up at NES, Super Nintendo, and 64, GameCube, Wii, pretty much up until Halo Three. That was Xbox through six. Sixty was the first console I ever bought. I eventually got a Sega from some of the kid, and I had uh, Game Boys, D DSs, Game Boy Colors, all the way up to. But yeah, it was always I had, Nintendo. I had Sega Genesis, like all the Nintendos, every Nintendo. And then I started with Sega with Sega Genesis. I didn't have the first one. Yeah. And then I had PlayStation One, PlayStation Two, PlayStation Two. I got huge into PlayStation Two, like in a ton of those games. But also, like, still Nintendo. Like, I'll always love Nintendo. Like those, because those games are fun too. Even though you, you like you said they're like oh they're little kid games or whatever. <laughs> Like, I don't give a shit. Those games are fun. Like, Super no, Mario Sunday. Are. That game was the shit. I but, feel like, like that's what but, happened to me. I grew out of platformers. Like, Majora's Mask might have been the last, like, platformer I really fully completed. After that, I just started to move away from it. Like, I got short attention spans. Yeah, later. that's... Like, I mean, that's the other thing is, like... Challenge shooters. That's the other thing is, like, my favorite series of all time is Zelda. And you're only going to get Zelda on Nintendo. That's, that's exactly. the only yeah. way you are ever going to get Zelda. I, so, I, I yeah. think I'm I, I tend to be so like I tend to focus on the like whatever one thing at a time very slowly with games so because I mean but I played them all I mean 
you know, 87, 86, we got the Nintendo and then I got, you know, then I got the Sega Genesis. I didn't get Super Nintendo and then I got the PlayStation. So I really kind of skipped a lot. Of, I, I Now I you played didn't get Super Nintendo though, but that's like one of the best Nintendos. Okay. My but, favorite console of all time. Yeah, I, those the I games are awesome. We could Donkey Kong. I love the out of all the Donkey Kong, Super Nintendo Donkey Kong is the best Donkey Kong. Country, the original country. country. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I mean, I rented it a lot. Like I played Star Fox. Like, I love Star Fox. Rented it like fucking rolling in the fucking money if you were able to rent that shit. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> you come from some. I swear to God. I don't know. I just because I remember like. I remember I seeing them. A couple it was eleven dollars to rent it at the local store, and we already. My mother had bought me That's Nintendo and Sega Genesis. That's how poor I was. But it was Nintendo and Sega Genesis. I owned Nintendo and Sega Genesis. My mother wasn't gonna go. Now I'm gonna. She just wouldn't let me buy Super Nintendo. I spent my oh, okay. money on more Sega Genesis games. You know what I mean? The only time I got systems was when my grandparents like got divorced and they were fighting for our love. So like one would buy like. Oh Jesus! <laughs> yeah. Game, like. One of them bought us like the GameCube or whatever, or the um, PlayStation One, and then what was the other thing that came out at the same time? Uh, N64. 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 Yeah. yeah. That's, That's literally how we got those two systems. Super Nintendo. No, it was me. They, but they <laughs> were like, it, I'm not joking. Like it was like we bo we got all those systems because they were like because they were fighting for our love. Well, um, yeah, I missed out. I missed out on the SNES because I was playing Sega Genesis because uh, I went from yeah, the master here. system over to Genesis, started playing that, and I just completely forgot about Super Nintendo. So it's like now I got that SNES classic, so yeah. I get to go back and start playing all those old games that I missed out on. And I'm like, geez, I missed out on this fucking system. God damn, dude, well, this place is great. But here's the <laughs> other thing with that. Here's the other thing. A lot of the games that were on Super Nintendo, a lot of them. We're on Sega Genesis, like they they oh, yeah. they came I was out on both. Say, those were very similar consoles. Yeah, for the longest yeah. time, even probably more similar now than Xbox, PlayStation. But let's go back to the controllers and, and like uh, you know we really getting off. Uh, we could just yeah. do it. We could do a five hour podcast on this. But let's get back to the controllers. So so D Moon says he started this whole thing off with GameCube. <coughs> Best controller for him is GameCube. Uh, real quick, what's your second one? Um, I'd have to go with the Xbox 360 as okay. the second one. All right, uh, I, let's go to let's go. I definitely think I I agree with you because that's for me that's my that's my I'll just give mine real quick. That's my number one. Xbox 360 is my favorite <laughs> controller of all time. Um, and then probably second would be uh, I don't know, maybe like the original, like the super the original Nintendo controller or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that Tough original. To argue that over the Super Nintendo one. I mean, Super Nintendo is more comfortable, rounded curves. Yeah, more buttons, four more buttons. I think it's I felt like, I always felt it was a kind of small. Yeah, it was. Nintendo was too. But like, I don't know the I don't know the Super Nintendo one. I always caught, thought it was like kind of like a little bit small. Well, then you must have thought the original one was really small. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I was never like crazy about how those. Fit in my hand. I I fit fine in my hand. I, I mean, I like or maybe it's more that they're flat. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, that was just. I see. I was used to that. It got weird with Sega because they made the kind of more fat curved controller. It can be that we're just used to like you yeah. know better controllers now, and then like back then it just looks like well, how the hell did we play this? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It probably wasn't a problem back then. Well, let's go to uh, Leah. Leah, what was your favorite? What's your favorite controller? I don't know if it counts. But I mean, I'd automatically say a keyboard and a mouse. Yeah, I think it counts because that's Ooh. how you, how, <laughs> how you okay, play okay. a game. Wait for that to come out. Um, I mean, I I like a keyboard better than a controller because a controller, a lot of games, you have a set specific um, layout. layout that you can choose from. But on a keyboard, I can set everything exactly how I want it. I can make it all like I can I can do all different um, key bindings and stuff like that. So I can like sort of like I don't know, make it as best as I can to like play. You know, I don't know. It's just more comfortable. And also, I I have never found a first person shooter on any console that the sensitivity I can get right. It's either too fast. I move it down one. It's too slow. It's so I have that problem it's probably just me not being able to use a controller for first person shooters but with a mouse i don't have that problem like i play PUBG on the computer and it's like i'm my accuracy is probably like a hundred times 
better than it is when we play on the well, Xbox Yeah, anybody one. should be on computer. It's point and click is definitely way easier. I mean, is anybody going to argue PC wouldn't be the best? It's the same if we had a console argument. Of course, PC is the best you can customize. I don't know. Everything. when it comes. Yeah. I, I think when single players, it's. It, I, I don't think it's as comfortable as a controller. For PC, but I mean that could just be my preference. I don't know. Well, you're right. Maybe in a situation where you don't need everything, yeah, it's not like multiplayer in the heat of battle. Yeah, if point. you're more in a competitive environment, then I can understand for keyboard and mouse. So yeah. it's it's always going to outdo a controller every day, every time. So yeah, as long as you're not facing like you know you're not on a keyboard mouse versus people on controllers, like, you'd crush them probably. You know, if it was on, <laughs> but it, like like people do that on Xbox, like you guys said, like Leah said, you yeah, it's like a three hundred dollar device, right, where you can convert it to a keyboard i mean that's crazy i mean the, the argument you could make against a, a computer versus um you know like a console because i mean like is that when you buy a console it comes like that's it you've got everything set you're right there everything all the games that you buy for that are going to work on that you don't need to work you know like when i buy a new computer game i have to be like holy shit hold my graphics card is going to be able to hold up to this what you didn't have the nintendo 64 expansion pack <laughs> the, the Nintendo Rumble, Rumble Pack, the Rumble pack. <laughs> <laughs> Disc Drive. Oh, wait, that never came out in America. <laughs> hey, um, Casey Yates says, "Hey, Leah, how much do you like the Switch? I love it." Oh yeah, it's awesome. I mean, oh, I wish so. there was more games. I'm excited for Pokemon. So <laughs> wait for that. <laughs> Gonna wait like, let's see, what is it? I feel like that's traditional Nintendo. Five. Not- Trusting as much to third party, always staying more on on a uh, you know main company properties. Well, then we got um, real quick we got a uh, couple more. Oh shit! Damn it! I just screwed <laughs> up. <laughs> I messed up. Uh-oh. I mean, if I go to console systems though, you know what controller I always really loved was the PlayStation Two. That's a good one. Yeah. With the analogs, because the PlayStation One didn't have the analog sticks. See, I'm really so you stingy. So got a PlayStation Two, and they had the analog sticks, and I don't know, it just always fit nicely in my hand. And the whole reason I didn't buy an Xbox was because of that bulky ass, horrible controller. Wait a minute, they had a uh, well, we'll Duke. Get, they call that the we'll, Duke. Well, we'll get into yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Let's get into that. They just next. remade it. Somebody made a custom, uh, like the. It's like I, I yep. think it's like half officially endorsed, like remake. They remade it. I have for two of them. One. I have two of the original ones from my original Xbox. I have them. You can get them for Xbox One now, though. Somebody's making them. Yeah. And oh. Them. Well, so, real quick. First of all, PlayStation... The first PlayStation, PlayStation 1 did have both analog sticks. Yeah, it did. I remember yeah. that. Leah just it said did? It. They did? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. They it came out a little them. later, but it, yeah, it came out for it. Oh, um, all right. Well, I guess I'm thinking of the one that came with it, maybe, because I remember it was flat. It didn't have yeah, like, no, yeah. The, yeah, original the original one was a flat. Originally, yeah. it didn't have it. Yeah, you're right. On, you're right. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know what? You're right. I'm wrong. You're right. I've got the original ones upstairs. I should know that. The... The PlayStation ones were always too small for me and too awkward. It felt like it was like designed by a robot, like it never yeah. contoured to my hand. That's what the ones that I my favorites are common is that they all kind of contour better. Um, Red Engine says I'm pretty sure N64 was like ninety six, ninety seven. If uh, if N sixty four is your yeah, it was nineteen ninety six. And yeah. if N sixty four controller is your favorite, you're an alien. Yeah. Yeah. That's- or have a deformity, <laughs> in which case I apologize, but not because you have something that works for you. That's the regularly. reason I didn't buy that console. That's the reason I didn't <laughs> play N64. Who else burned the shit out of their palms playing Mario Party on that plastic ass joystick? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, at one point, you could actually mail away for a glove. Y'all remember that? Oh they, my it became God. an actual problem. <laughs> so many kids were burning a hole in their palm in their hand, spinning the joystick. For me, it was on the Piranha Plant Tug of War. I distinctly remember it was traumatic. Mario oh, Party 1, yeah. Piranha Plant Tug of War burned a hole in my fucking hand. But it was so bad, <laughs> Nintendo announced you could mail in, like, a proof of purchase or whatever, or just write a letter and, for, like, five bucks shipping or whatever. They sent you, like, an official leather Mario Party glove, like, with reinforced <laughs> palm. It's like a weightlifting glove, and you could, like, spin the shit out of it. I had an ADD even when I was 10, so I didn't send away and get it, but it was ridiculous. <laughs> you wanted to get it, never got it. Red Enigma, it was thanks like the, for that. It was like the real power glove. Knucklehead Gaming <laughs> News and Music says, Favorite current gen Xbox One Elite, favorite retro, Dreamcast, the ability to load cartridges right in the controller, fucking baller. Oh, stole my thunder. <laughs> never had cool. the Dreamcast. Didn't, I never didn't certain excited. games like use the screen on the, uh, yes. the like, yeah. memory pack as like mini yeah. games and stuff? Yes, you know, I will say yeah. the Xbox Elite controller, like, he's right. Like, 
you know that might be my new favorite controller too. I think I'm gonna um, buy one. I I I, I kind of want to get the the stupid three hundred dollar one. I'm like leather. Like I I like the leather. <laughs> Jesus, my hands get so fucking. Jesus sweat. Christ, you <laughs> fucking baller. I'll tell you. <laughs> I said, I'm thinking about it. I don't know if it's worth it, but my hands get so goddamn like clammy when I'm playing. Yeah, Ugh, you would, but you can get it. a wrap, a skin wrap that you put over it instead of <laughs> spending three hundred. Dollars. Yeah, you know. but it's yeah. like orange and you know leather, and yeah. it's just easier. I don't know. You're right. Maybe there's probably somebody that sells like custom leather wraps for controllers and shit. Better get the insurance if you get it. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Better get it. Uh, thank you, Knucklehead Gaming News and Music. Uh, yeah, Dreamcast kind of had that little button too, kind of like the N64. That little fucking that little thumb toggle. That was. Yep. That had a nasty one too. Not that anybody burned anything out playing that thing, but. <laughs> you know, it, but uh, so Leah, what's your what's maybe your second favorite? Now the first one was keyboard and mouse. PlayStation Two, it said. Oh, you did? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay, so uh, Himmel God. Yeah. Um. My it would have been GameCube. Favorite. What's that? I said it would have been GameCube, but oh, okay. D Moon took it. Oh well, you didn't. You could. You don't have to not say it because D Moon. I know, said but it. I wanted to bring up something different. Well, okay. Well, we'll talk about everything. Don't worry. I mean, we'll get to it. <laughs> no, we'll get to everything. I'm just quickly... This was supposed to be a quick thing like, hey, what is yours? Okay, now we know what everybody's deal is. Now let's talk about it. But it's, this is fine. This is working fine just like this is fine. I want to fight now. Uh, yeah, what is this? Movie fights? Movie fights was great up until they got all SJW and that guy touched every intern in the place. Oh, well, he, well, keep in mind, uh, you mean until they he stopped touching everybody, because all the episodes you enjoyed were while he was touching yeah, people. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was, but something, I don't know what was going on, but him him trying to him trying to strong arm all the women interns in the back that made the shows great. I don't know what it was, but now that he's not allowed to, now that he's fired and like they keep hiring, you know, women over there because they're afraid of whatever, it's gotten horrible. That show is terrible. I still like a lot of the main stuff. I still watch it almost every day, the main stuff. I, I mean... I fucking, I, some of this shit is just hilarious. Big Joe Star fan. Gotta maybe. Say. I don't know. I can't deal with it. <laughs> I stopped watching, man. But, uh, hey, we got the announcer from over there. Anyway, I'm sorry. Himmelgod, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, my number one uh, controller actually is the Xbox 360. Um, there it is. The best part is that it's just so comfortable in your hand when you're sitting there and you're playing first-person shooters and like playing a game like Halo or, or, or shit like that. and I just... I love the way the uh, analog sticks are set up, you know, compared to, say, with the PlayStation, where they're oh, kind of yeah. just, you know, parallel to each other. And this one, you got one slightly higher, and then on the right, it's, you know, in the regular position. Yeah. So for me, I just got comfortable with that playing first-person shooters, and that was, like, you know, my jam when I'm sitting there playing on uh, fucking Xbox. But because um, we used to have, like, a meetup group, and shoot, we, we just play first-person shooters, and I kind of got used to it which came to my second favorite, which ended up being the Dreamcast. And the Dreamcast started getting me into shooters where I had the, uh, I would play Unreal Tournament and Quake over on uh, Dreamcast. And that's how I started getting used to control. So when I got, a, when I got to eventually to the Xbox controller, it just felt like I was right at home. Uh, yeah. So for me, I'm more of a shooter guy. So the Xbox 360 worked out for, shooter games compared to like now where i'm playing on a ps4 controller well it Fucking really like call of duty and shit it you know? really but, makes a difference himmel farb you know it's a double, yeah. uh, himmel god it makes a difference <laughs> <laughs> like, i'm gonna call you himmel god no but no Brian's don't like, you blaspheme in here it's so weird dude because it's it's true because i used to love third person on playstation mm -hmm. playstation was my yeah. i loved playstation controller during tomb raider one two and three and twisted oh, metal yeah, definitely. but definitely. now like i i hate shooters and i hate sports games on the playstation i can't stand that controller for sports games because the the thumbsticks just don't feel right down there like i want it, the, it I, is i'd it rather gets, them above it's, like, it's sometimes when you have them right there like right next to each other and then boom it's like i'll converge into it once in a while and it happened to me a few times i'll play call of duty uh black ops 3 on my ps4 and it happens a few times yeah uh, when i'm playing but um, for some reason i do well on ps4 uh call of duty using that controller compared to say on the 360 whereas on the 360 i'm just playing fucking halo or doom or whatever and i'm more used to it with those so yeah i don't know it's kind of a weird complex or what but I actually buy. I actually bought. It's broken now because I broke it the night I. I shouldn't have done this because it was an eighty. It was eighty dollars. But the night Scott, I freaked out. I, I actually had a, a Xbox type 
uh, converter yeah. for PlayStation so I could play PlayStation. That's how oh, bad okay. it is. For well, me, they got now. a new controller coming up now, uh, like uh, Scuff controller, which is like a like their Elite controller type. Yeah. And on PS4, it has the setup like like the Xbox. So. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. See, I love that. That's the big. That can be a crusher, man. I mean, look at the N64. But uh, what uh, exactly? <laughs> So we got everybody. So I mean, so far except for Troy, we got uh, D Moon said GameCube, Leah said keyboard mouse, I said 360, you said 360. Yep. I would also say that Elite. Maybe I would make Elite my second favorite now because I just love that thing. But um, and then uh, Himmel God said 360. Yeah. So uh, Troy, what's uh, your favorite controller? Number one's GameCube. And so there you go. There's something unique about the GameCube controller, is yeah. that it's the big A button. The A yeah. button being the main focus. Yeah. Let's face it, there's one mm -hmm. main button on all controllers anyway. But the fact that it, it's bigger than everything else, you can so easily roll into every single button. You can hit A and Y, A and X, A and A and B all at the same time easily. Yeah. You can roll in between them. And that Even was. The buttons themselves just feel good. Like, exactly. They all had the, the size cut. of the. Yeah, and the, the, the way they push down and stuff. Yeah, and it was kind of interesting because it had Z trigger. It had the Z as yes. basically R1 yeah. now, or what would be like bumper. Didn't have it on the left side, but that was interesting enough to have an extra have the Z there anyway. But that big A button, and it actually same thing. It has the joy the two joysticks. I mean, the right is the C stick, which now that I think about it, it was really underutilized. I can't think of any GameCube games where you, you would use the GameCube controller like a modern shooter now, like using the C stick to strafe and turn like right. we do in like anything else. So that was kind of underutilized. But <laughs> GameCube is definitely a favorite, and it was contoured well. It it fit my hands like it actually like just fit right, felt right. Uh, the Every single button was easy to press without having to awkwardly contort. And I think that's the theme, what makes it good for me. And it's my hands are always just big and awkward. Uh, second favorite is Xbox One. I don't, I don't know why you guys like it. Xbox 360, the same thing, it was too small. Like for me to hit the bumper and a trigger at the same time or ha just have them positioned is too awkward. I got to do like the crab, like a crab position. It's just <laughs> almost too contoured. It's too little, too curled up. Uh, the Xbox One is just wider. It's like it's just flatter. It's more open, so it just fits my hand a whole lot better. I can really get a good uh, uh, curve on it. So that's it's just comfortable. The I PlayStation was always a lot better on the Xbox One I, controller too. Oh so. yeah, the sensitivity. I couldn't have. give it. The only reason I don't, I wouldn't say Xbox One is because like they just break. Like that's why I say Elite. I would say like I love the Elite controller. I literally hate the Xbox One. Well, that's controller. Xbox One. That's just a specialized one. That's like saying my favorite GameCube controller is the Wave Bird. Because it was well, yeah, it's the same thing, yeah. <laughs> well, but yeah, but that's the thing is the quality. I broke of, like three of those fucking things. Yeah, me too. But the, the only GameCube controller I ever broke, though. But the quality the of ones. the Xbox One <laughs> controller is so bad that like I can't possibly put it on there because it's so bad. Like it breaks. Like you, you know, at least twenty percent of gamers report that it breaks in their hands. Like I mean, that's it worn down. Yeah, but I, I had the one that snapped and. It, two have probably worn down in what the four years I've had it now, which is I'll I guess, I'll, I'll break it in a week. Every time, I, it's guaranteed. If I play NHL, it's broken in a week. Oh, Do you think if you I didn't play NHL, it would break? Yeah, as long as I didn't play NHL or like Madden or something, it's, sports games, it Because NHL, you're always torquing, whether it's on the face-offs yeah. or like taking a snipe, dangling. You're jamming that thing to the... Yep. The, the stick to the plastic every single time. And, you know, people... You put a lot of torque on them. People you like criticize. like to accelerate, like to deke. Well, people criticized my video, criticizing the control. They were like, "Oh, you know, you just you're too po you're an idiot or something." And I'm like, "No, because no controller in my life ever has broken because of me using it. Like, so there's something wrong with this controller." But the Elite is made differently. Like, they use I don't know what it is, some kind of like graphite plastic it. or something. Like, it's different and it doesn't break. It doesn't. No matter how much I'm torquing it, it doesn't break. So it's like, okay, I, the Elite is worth It's almost like they knew that or something. It's really weird. Um, ADTR, what's up, ADTR? He dropped a $2 super chat. You guys can super chat your favorite controllers if you'd like, and we'll read it on the air here and during the podcast. Um, SS Tricky says, best snowboarder game ever. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. ADTR says, SX Tricky is the best snowboarder game for PS2. I love well, that. I remember yes, that too. game. I love All time, game. I I gotta say, uh, 1080 Avalanche. I never played oh, yeah, 360. Yeah, yeah, I the one in GameCube is pretty good too. <laughs> yeah, the GameCube is the one that I played. I never it's got to play that series Wave Race. I played SS I Tricky, but I never got to play the what you just said, the Avalanche one. Yeah, it was Nintendo. No, I played that. 
Yeah. I, I, I just liked on SS Tricky, like, like wasn't that, like, you, it was kind of like Tony Hawk in a way, like, right? You could do all kinds of weird yeah. stuff and get crazy points for it. And it, it felt like, you know, one day you were going to hit some kind of, like, mega, like, you know, move or whatever. That, and you were going to, like, <laughs> this is going to give you all kinds of points. Like, oh, you see what I just did? Uh, yeah. That was a pretty good game. I didn't play it a lot, but played enough to, 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 to enjoy that. I'm sure that was, it was a good game. Well, I thought Tony Hawk. I thought Tony Hawk for three hours. Well, a, t- part t- one of a part six special. <laughs> 18 hours on Hawk. Well, we can do that. Destroy on Hawk. We can do that. I mean, you know, I was th- th- one night, you know, what I was thinking is we get, you know, a couple of cameras. We sit you on the left, me on the right. We, we play it a little bit. We we talk about it, you know. Um, well, there's all kinds of things we can do with this game. Let me tell podcast. you. Let me tell you, Cronin. Phoenix Downhill Jam. What a bitch of a level. <laughs> Bitchin', but a bitch. Well, didn't they, they, they remade it, though, right? We can download the remade version. Just not the same. It isn't, it, it. because the, it, it's like Halo, the remake of Halo. The physics got better. The frame it, rate just makes it feel weirder, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. the old frame rate is what made it awesome, because you could do crazy shit that you probably shouldn't be able to do. Exactly. So, <laughs> yeah. that's what's. It, people don't understand that that's what's really fun. I think that's why PUBG is so fun, and we'll get into that later, but... What is uh, everybody's worst controller? I'll just say that mine's probably probably is the N64 or maybe the PlayStation at this point. I got to say the original PlayStation as well. I mean, I enjoyed the console, but yeah, that controller was pissing me off so mad. See, I but, Yeah, see, I like the I like the original PlayStation. It was the play, it was only I, I, they're all the same, almost, right? I mean, like they really are. They're all, exactly the they're same. They're all the, the same. PlayStation yeah. One and Two. Yeah. Well, I just the, like the, the first one, one, the first one was also a lot lighter. It yeah. felt like cheapy plastic, you know. It hollow, yeah. 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 Like well, I, I didn't I, have the the. There probably wasn't Rumble originally, right? Yeah, there was the, the Dual the, Shock. Yeah. yeah, there was. Yeah. Dude, the N sixty four when that came out, I was like, dude, is this a weapon? <laughs> like, am I supposed to? <laughs> Like, who came up with this pitchfork design? Like, <laughs> when I asked my, when I asked my brother, I told him we were doing this podcast or whatever. He immediately was like, "Yeah, N sixty four is the worst piece of shit ever." Yeah, he's like it's so off kilter, it's so awkward. Like you don't, there's like nowhere to, like you, it's like you're off center because there's two places to put your hand, three places to put your hand. You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> it was I very weird, weird, very weird design. It's. Uh, if I really think about it, yeah, I, I would say actually, you know, I agree with you. The N sixty four really sucked for a controller, but I mean, I, I got used to it eventually when I played like Zelda or whatever. But yeah, it's that's, true. Yeah, that's kind of that's the argument it's, I made with exactly. him was you, you get used to it and you figure yeah. out which hands positions work for you for what game. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it it's weird like that because in a way like it's like it is memorable. I remember we used to play wrestling games on it and like I had no problem, you know. But when you, oh, I love fucking. No mercy. No mercy. <laughs> yeah. No mercy was the shit. No mercy, and then there was like NWO. Yeah, WCW, WCW. WCW Revenge or something. Yeah, and, dude, that was great. That game was awesome. Atti- never... Attitude and for N sixty four was the the my best. I got one. I think was it WrestleMania like thirty three or something for GameCube. That was all right, but Attitude was the best original one. We even found the one for Super Nintendo. Y'all remember what the what? I don't even remember what it was called, but with like. Doink and Bam Bam Bigelow, the 2D one. Wasn't that even in our arcade game? Yeah, yeah okay, it was. It. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Yeah. Kelvin says, uh, Kelvin just hit us with a super chat. He says, um, the Wii controller is the worst ever made. I didn't hate the Wii controller. Mm-hmm. It. it is yeah, weird, I didn't though. hate it either. It, 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 no, is, it, totally it is a disagree. risky thing, so you could see how you could see how many people could hate that if their hands don't work right with it, because it's a weird controller. But because I mean, like you also, you didn't really with a lot of games, you didn't really actually need to do like the motions of stuff. Was he talking about the nunchuck and flipping it and having yeah. to use it, or is yeah. he talking about the like, actual didn't controller? Make Twilight Princess too much better. Yeah, like I, yeah, I mean, like it's like you could technically hold it and shoot a bow. I never did that. It was kind of like yeah. a bigger version of the Nintendo Super Nintendo controller, really. Probably one of my favorite right. games of all time, though, specifically because it was on Wii. Resident Evil 4. Being able to just actually finally do headshots in Resident Evil. Oh my god. <laughs> it was so good. Oh man. I, uh... And plus, it, you got all the DLC. I remember it came out, of, it was Resident Evil 4 was a GameCube exclusive. That was fucking badass. And then PlayStation 2 got it. 
with more with exclusive DLC. It was like fuck, and then it came out on Wii, and it was like, oh my god, this, this is the best game ever. Just pure <laughs> headshots, just fucking like, oh, yeah. they had the Umbrella Chronicles, the shooter. Resident Evil, despite how shitty Six was, still might be my favorite series of all the time. Steven uh, German uh, did a five dollar super chat. What's up, Steven? Thank you, man. He's been making five points for Joe. He's he's, he's attacking, <laughs> not attacking me this time. He's starting already. <laughs> yeah, he's going after us already. This one he didn't attack me somehow. He said Wii controller is the best controller. I'm aching from that baseball game I went to. I don't know what that. Mm. <laughs> I don't get that part of it. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that's right. No idea. Of course. Where was the bat? <laughs> he was playing on the Wii, Troy. Come on. Oh okay. <laughs> I'll tell you what, though, the Wii, you know what the problem with the Wii was? Not just the controller specifically, but the problem with the Wii was the best game that ever came out for it was the first game that ever came out for it. There was never better usage of that controller than Wii Sports. Yeah. Wii Sports. Fucking the golf, the well, tennis, even the bowling was pretty good on it. I don't know if you heard this, uh, Troy, but we went over last week on the show, well, the pilot episode. Even though this is episode one, we sort of did a pilot episode. We talked about the PUBG. The pilot. Yeah, I'm going to use that word pilot. Yeah, I thought it was good, so we kept doing it. Although Jake isn't here tonight, so that's kind of funny because I think he's supposed to be the mainstay. I think he forgot well, or passed you, out. You never, you never keep the same cast from the pilot. Well, I replaced Jake. I'm the younger, we, slimmer, more popular version. We it's don't. Perfect, <laughs> it's perfect, it's perfect. You made the best move you've ever made as producer. We um, we went over the the top ten most selling games of all time. PUBG's number five, by the way. I, I did hear that. Yeah. Okay. No yeah. surprise. I could have told you number one. Uh, if you want me to spoil it, is the best mobile game of all time, Tetris. Tetris was number one, but yeah, yeah. we but we sports was on there. As oh like, yeah, because it was packaged with the console, and it's one of the best right. selling. Consoles. Right. Does that really yeah. count as a sale though? Like when you yes, really think yes, about it, it does. That's yeah. crazy. That is that is no, not, not right. when you think about it, but for paper it does. Yeah, that's stupid. Um, um, it worked. I'm trying Too to bad pull for it up Switch, again. They didn't package a fucking game with it. That would have been nice. <laughs> well, I think they right. did, didn't they? Didn't they package? Some, well, I don't know. I, no, they didn't. I would have thought they would have put that uh, one-two Switch game in there, but they didn't. They wanted to sell it for what fifty, sixty bucks. The, and still, barely anyone bought it. The the real shocker is the fact that PUBG was able to be on there. To me, I, I like just to me that kind of blow like blows my mind. I look at the top twenty here, and. Uh, you know, the in the top ten, eight, eight of them are Nintendo. You know, I mean, then there's Spectrum, Hollow Bite, which is Tetris and Mojang, Rockstar Games. But then there's like Nintendo, 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 Bethesda, Nintendo, Nintendo, and PUBG in there at five. You know what I'm honestly surprised about that list is that um, during the time where like shooters really started getting popular, I'm surprised Call of Duty. Modern Warfare isn't on there. You know why that is? Yeah. I, here's my theory on this. I said this last week too. And Halo's not even on there either. They're not even yeah. in the top 30. I, I think that's because when Halo was at the top of its game, it was 2001 to 2007. So much, so many less amounts of gamers at that point on console I, playing those games. That's true. I would feel the guess that there are no shooters on the list. It's just not a wide enough audience. Well, well right? no, Call of Duty's in 16, right? Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3? Yeah, number uh, well, 16 is Modern Warfare 3. Well, that was in the top 10, right? When we were just talking right. top 10? 26 yeah, top million. 10. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's still kind of close. Yeah, it I guess. still makes it. But, but that's what I'm saying. It's not none of the rated M games. Well, but I guess see, GTA, but Call of Duty. It's just not enough wide enough audience. Halo hit its peak at Halo 3. Like, when Halo 2 was out, everyone was everyone on Xbox was playing Halo 2. And, no, I'm right. <laughs> right, and, and anybody who didn't, who anybody who missed Halo Two, there was a lot of people that missed Halo Two somehow. But there, but, you know, there was a lot of people that missed Halo One. But there was a, there was a, then there was still a lot of people that missed Halo Two. And when Halo Three came out, everybody finally jumped on board. If you missed Halo Two, you said, "I'm not missing Halo 3 I'm, a, I'm in. So that was a first for a lot of new people. That's so, when I happened to get my 360 was like, I think a few months after Halo 3 came out. I right, Halo, to get it at that time. See, Halo 3 was like the third Korn album. Or, or like, you know, think of a band <laughs> where they come out with like one CD and people follow them, but then their second CD really gets them credit. But then when their third CD comes out, it's like their sellout CD and they, they're yeah. on MTV and they're everywhere. And, you know, by then everyone jumps on. And then by the fourth one, they start going down. And that's what happened to Halo. But as that happened, Call of Duty came out and that already people... Halo Halo 3 got everyone into shooters and then Call of Duty 
became the new thing, and that's what that's why that's on there, and Halo isn't on there because they because that that's when shit blew up after Halo because of Halo things blew up, just like you know PUBG and H1Z1 kind of started the 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 battle royale, battle royale stuff, yeah. yeah, and Fortnite then came out, and Fortnite's like the Call of Duty versus the Halo of this, but all all happening within a year instead of you know six years or whatever that was. Because I remember that the same year that Halo Three was released. Uh, Call of Duty 4 was released that same year, and I'm sitting there playing Halo, but all everyone would ever talk about is that Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Call yeah. of Duty, and eventually I got around to it when it was on sale during Christmas time, and I picked it up, and I was like, holy shit, this game is good. So I used to hate I got, it. I got hooked. I hated it because it broke all my friends up like from playing what I was... We, we always had these things, and they were like, no, we're playing Call of Duty, and I, I went on to Call of Duty, and I was like, this is like a computer shooter. You know, I don't want to, like, this isn't like Halo. Like, this is like a shooter on the computer. I'm not good at this. That too. I'm not good at this as well. Like, I was like, screw this game. But, uh... Then the only other game, like, a lot of us, we would play, because when I had my group down in South Florida, eventually we would play a lot of Rainbow Six. Yeah, we... And right. It was, like, between Halo, fucking Gears at that time, and then, uh... You had Call of Duty and fucking Rainbow Six. It's like, no, we're just playing Rainbow Six. So. Leah, do you remember Rainbow Six when me and you played that? It was like one of the yeah, first. Yeah, didn't we like glitch it out? Yeah, we got like really far, and then there was like we couldn't get yeah. further. Me and Leah, we played. Uh, I think it was Vegas two or yeah. one of the Vegas yeah, Rainbow Vegas Six Vegas. Was it was. If you go back and play it now, it's weird looking. It's like, like it's... you were in like a a mall or a bank or something casino like that. Casino or something. It was weird. Yeah, or a casino and like. There was something I think you it was go like, through all of those at some point. Yeah, <laughs> it is Vegas. Yeah. It is Rainbow yeah. Six Vegas, so all that is yeah. definitely... Wait, that's cool. Yeah, it was one of those. But there was, there was one point where it was like... we there. I, th I think it was like the the um the cutscenes or something, or there was like yeah. something didn't just didn't happen. It wouldn't trigger. Yeah, we were right. sitting on the screen, and it was like... That guy three miles back. No, you were, like, nope, you were just you loading. You to kill Phil to advance. <laughs> Yeah, we stopped. We stopped because of that. It was the first thing we really. I think it was one of the first things me and you ever played together because it was might have been two thousand eight, and I think when did Vegas Rainbow Six Vegas come out? Two thousand six. I think so. It was two thousand six. So might have been yeah. So like two years later, me and Leo were playing that, and uh, yeah, it was really we had a fun time though. But if you go back and play it, it's kind of like very pixelated looking more than you remember it's weird because you're like wow it, it is it's like 007 if you go back and look, play golden eye you're like what is what the hell <laughs> you know, oh, shit it just <laughs> it was I was thinking back then no but the game was great it yeah, was I think, yeah um, vegas 2 and halo 3 were both i want to say 2008 because that's when mm -hmm. i got it those were the first two games i got and yep. to date Halo 6 vegas 2 is still probably the game i was best at man i would it's like i got played it too much was a point where you certain levels like all right let me throw the two grenades up this hallway oh yeah four kills yeah. okay good start to the game all right where are we going <laughs> that <laughs> game i don't know why that game see that was like the PUBG of 2006 like that game right. was i don't know man it's, it's another it's another one of those cover, games like being able to just have your fucking pistol just push up against the wall looking down the hall waiting for somebody <laughs> hopping in and out of walls and shit oh i fucking yeah. <laughs> i should try to play siege more like i have it but i just barely ever play it I, it was amazing that that game was so fun with two players versus computers like because it's so weird it was really fun like i don't know it was it, it's hunt. It's another game where anything can happen kind of because like you said the glitches are fun not when the game breaks because of it and you right like because our game was ruined i believe because of it somehow or whatever i don't remember how the saves worked maybe it wasn't ruined or maybe we just did so much and then it got ruined so we were like oh we're not doing that again all right we're game over <laughs> you know that happened to me in tomb raider too the whatever the like tomb raider 5 or like the it's like the remake of one and two mixed or i forget what it was called but that game glitched for me and broke the uh, that i never went back to that game either I think I was, I was fighting the bear or something, or the arrows, and like oh, something, it, it, I got stuck and like and it wouldn't let me leave or go out or get anywhere. And and even when I went back in the game, I was there again. It was very weird, and that I, it broke it. I was like, all right, I'm never playing this again. I think I, I think at the time they had a MySpace or a Facebook, and I was messaging, <laughs> like I was, I was hitting them up like crazy. I was like, your goddamn game is broken. <laughs> I was really mad, but uh, yeah, anything we didn't cover as far as controllers, uh, I mean that anybody wanted to talk about. I mean, like I, I, I think we did cover it. 
you know, I think it's um, I think we got the controller part of this thing. Fuck <laughs> Mad Cats. Oh, oh my yeah. God. yeah, fuck Mad Cats. I hated that shit, dude. Oh, dude. PlayStation controllers with Mad Cats blisters for days. I fucking hated it. You get like a like a skin irritation from the cheap plastic the place put it together with. They're just yeah. they were always tiny. I need comfortable controllers. That's my number one factor, and they don't fit. It was a large boy. How how much longer? <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, let's talk quickly about the Xbox original controller because you know Leah yes, Le- Leah has said many times that would be my I hate this controller. <laughs> I I'm really. I, Yep. She didn't buy it. She she said it a million times. She didn't buy an Xbox because of it. It's too big for you. Uh, I remember that controller, but the thing, the problem with me for me was it's that thing was so fucking big. That's and my that's problem. Saying, yeah. yeah, and it was it was just something that didn't feel very comfortable for me. Not I mean, I dealt friendly. with it playing Halo, but then um, when they made a smaller version, I, I jumped to that like right away, and it just felt so much better sitting there playing games. So. Uh, it's like fuck, man. I, it's like I had might be nice, but like I had them. I had the money. I was going to the store to like to get it because I was like interested in a lot of the games that were coming out. Yeah. Right. And um, as I was like waiting for the like somebody to be available to talk to, I'm sitting there like playing it. On remember the setups they had in Walmart? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I'm I'm holding the control and I was like, I just fucking hate this. I was like, <laughs> I can't play it. It's so the the thing was so gigantic and heavy and awkward. That I, I ended up just being like, you know what? I'm just not gonna. The sales display lost the sale. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah did. I never, I never owned an Xbox, the original one, but I remember going over to my friend's house all the time to play it. And I mean, like, I've always had big hands growing up, so I mean, I guess it didn't really bother me. But it's I just, I don't know. All right, I guess. Sure, you can have that, Troy. <laughs> you can have that, Troy. I'll give you that. I guess. Well, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it always felt comfortable for me. But it's just like. Back then, I don't know. I guess I just wasn't into shooters, so like it never really appealed to me. This is why I probably never picked it up. But I don't know. I, I never had a problem with the original Xbox controller. It was pretty cool. Well, okay. So, for Steven, Ger- let me get through Steven German's super chats, and I'll tell you about my con- my about Xbox One controller or Big original hands. Xbox for me. My hands, my beautiful hands. Uh, Joe, why you make me do it, bro? I don't know. Why did I make you do it, Steven? <laughs> do what? I don't know. That's a very scary tweet. <laughs> or or. Uh, Super chat, but thank you for it. And then he wrote, I'll chop yo cock, bro. Oh, fuck. All right. Yeah. That's weird. Very disturbing. Steven's going to kill me. You or Joe Cronin's cock must win or something. I'm oh, not- that maybe that's what he's talking about. That guy. Maybe it's not me. But then Steven <laughs> says. No, he probably means he's chop your cock. I think that's what he was going for. <laughs> Dance Dance Revolution, my best uh, game. EA Slapshot was the best beat people. Steven, I, I don't. Um, I can't imagine him playing Dance Dance Revolution. I was just going to say that right now. I can. It's hilarious. <laughs> you should put that on a rant line. Just oh, came out of arcade playing DDR. <laughs> yeah. Steven, thank you for maybe, the $5. Maybe Steven started playing with that game Res and had the uh, Trans Vibrator controller. <laughs> oh, my God. Wait till <laughs> they come up with that. Double uh, ba- well, dildo controller. But no, um, <laughs> so when they, you know, for the... Okay, so when I pulled the Xbox controller out of the package, and I mean, I pulled it out. The, I've told the story plenty of times. I was I snuck home. Don't forget to clip that. Somebody time mark that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Now that there's the uh, there's what there's I think a year later. I don't know how long it took Xbox to remake the controller. Maybe a year, six months. I don't remember how long. It was pretty quick though. Pretty quickly they were like, uh oh, and they made a new controller like very fast. So right. on the left is the the new version, which is more like the one we know today, and on the right is the original big fat one. Now, <laughs> I I actually get really nostalgic when I look at this thing. It is you like the big fat one? Yeah, the big fat one, my big fat hands. But no, when I pulled it out and I started, when I first grabbed it, I went, "Oh my Christ, is this thing huge? Like, what are they doing? This controller is enormous!" Like, and I was like, "What is this?" And I don't have long fingers, so I'm like, am I gonna fit around this thing? But I do have long fingers. I have small hands, but like like long fingers, and it still didn't work. Mm. <laughs> well, I got over it like pretty quickly. You know, I got used to it pretty quickly. But it was like, you know, initially it was kind of like, wow, like this is crazy. You know, you put the memory card in the top of it. Uh, yeah. It, but it was great, and and you know, I really this controller when I see it, I I can smell the smells. Of, I'm not kidding, of the console when I pulled it out of the box and the smell of the plastic, 
the look of the <laughs> Halo, like pulling out the Halo game, like everything. I loved this thing. And when they made the new controller, I was thankful and I liked it. But I there's something about this controller. I still once in a while would love to plug in the original Xbox, go get this controller and hook it up. And you know, it still feels kind of new to me cuz like, you know, we it still feels like retro and what I grew up with was Nintendo and even PlayStation and Sega Genesis and Sega. Right. You know, that still feels like the old school to me, but you know, the Xbox, I still have this major nostalgia with this thing. The knobs kind of had a rounded off thing too. I don't it's hard to see, but the knobs didn't kind of face upward a little bit. They they face downward like an umbrella. Um, right. Yeah. Which was also kind of different. And sometimes that would dig a little bit in your thumb, the middle of your thumb. There'd be like a pushing point. You'd have a little soreness from, especially when I played Halo. But certainly not as bad as N64 or anything <laughs> else. But um, it's hard to go back to it after you'd played with the... Because on the uh, when they remade the controller, the, on the old one, the white and black buttons were buttons you use for option buttons, like to switch grenades and Halo and stuff like that. Correct. So like these buttons being down here, as opposed to way at the top on the other one. That was the first thing that was like difficult. It was like, whoa, these are like, this is the reverse of what the controller used to be. <laughs> well, black and white was pretty much like start and select, right? That didn't have... No, 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 it had start and or... select. So, no, it had start and select. In fact, that was weirder too. On the original one, you can see they're in the middle, like most controllers in the middle. But on the new one, they were on the left and right below the left thumbstick. Mm-hmm. Were they still uh, the cheeseburger button and cheese slice button back then? <laughs> yeah, you, you know you can take the um, you can take the uh, white and black button as the uh, you know where the the le- left bumper right bumper are now. Right, like th- those were the buttons for that. That's how it was back in the old day, and I, and I remember how to sit there and select them, especially when I was playing. Uh, was it that anniversary uh, edition over there, Master Chief Collection? Yeah. yeah. So trying to get used to all that shit and I'm like, man, where's the black and white button? <laughs> so, <laughs> Seriously, yeah. the the Duke looks like the the good controller got stung by a swarm of bees. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like <laughs> swollen like three times the size. Like, oh, <laughs> oh, the Duke. The so, Duke. I was just I just saw one recently over at the uh, GameStop over here, not too far from me, and they had them. And I just looking at it going, Yeah, I don't even want to go back to this shit, so. Brian, do you want to be as, really as nostalgic as it is? I just don't want anything to do with it. <laughs> you want to be really enraged? There was a, uh, um, there's a there's a Mad Cats version of <laughs> of the big one. Like I have it. It's upstairs because oh, at some point my mother, I said I needed another controller, and she bought me like you know for birthday or Christmas or something. She bought me. Um, the Mad Cats version of the big one, which was that's, even worse. That's like half oh. free diet Pepsi. Like, I think I'd rather nothing. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I, now, now, I got to tell you, I have it. I have it upstairs somewhere, and I don't know where it is. If I had it, I'd show it to you. It's very similar Probably to... Probably buried in the closet. If you remove the middle button, the middle uh, staff from the N64... Like it just had the left and rights, and right. then made it Xbox. That's what it looked like. It was very <laughs> huge. But then they also made an alternate small version. T- take a look at this one. I don't know if anybody had this, but I have two of these. I don't know if I still have them, but I have one or two. Trick Xbox controller. I don't know if I can. Did I put my screen on? No, I'll put it on for you now. It's on Skype now. That thing. Oh, woo! That. <laughs> that. Oh thing my god! Made. It's so ugly. It was great though. That looks terrible, but <laughs> look at that fucking thing. I loved it. How could anybody play that? Look at how look at how spaced out the everything sticks, is. Yeah, the yeah. <laughs> the control pad is like a yard away from the buttons. Even look at even the I buttons are gigantically spaced. <laughs> yeah. First thing oh, I think man. of is like look. I'm looking at freaking Sam Fisher from fucking Splinter Cell. That's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually oh. had that man. I'm telling you, like I actually had that. There was one other one too. It wasn't. It was a Matt cat, a Mad Cat. So you might recognize this one. This is another one that I had, uh, which I I like this one, but it was a mini one. You know, it was a little too small. But well, it's not that bad. This one was all right. That was definitely one that was pretty good. 
that resembles more the modern shape. Yeah. Like it looks like a human hand is meant to grasp that. <laughs> I wish I could find the big Mad Cats one for you. I'm looking at images right now, and I just can't find it, but it is nasty. Like, it is, like, it is wider than the fat original one. Like, it's wider. So it's so it's left and right. It's wider. And then the, the, the bottom sticks down more, like, sticks out sharply. It is so awkward and light. <laughs> like, it is really weird. It is, uh... I don't know, man. It's it's bizarre. I'm still looking. I can't find it. That that green one that we just looked at was very reminiscent of Dreamcast, though. Yes. Yeah, it did. It it, did, it really did. It looked like the way Dreamcast. it's designed. It's like, what the fuck is that? Did any of you guys have the uh, original? Like, we didn't talk about Sega CD a lot or anything like that. But mm -hmm. did, did you ever have? Did you have that original Nintendo? Um, the the big one, like the God controller, like the Advantage one, the bit kind of like the arcade. Oh, the NES Advantage. Yes. It's like with little. Um, oh, I have the Super Nintendo one. Yeah, with the turbo. It's, it's like a fight stick kind of. Yes. Right? Oh, yeah. that thing. Yep. Yeah, I have that and the um the five way adapter, so you could play like fucking track yeah. and field and Bomberman with a bunch of people. I, I feel like a lot of it was <laughs> like you want you felt like you were at the arcade, like that's part of it. You know, it was like why are we doing this though? You know, but you wanted to feel like you're at the arcade. You get a lot of people that make those fancy arcade, uh, arcade like arcade stick shit. Yeah, uh, that you see for a lot of the fighting games, and it's like <laughs> you got my roommate has together to use it. My roommate's a big uh, Super Nintendo guy. He's got like the three hundred dollar one he imported from Japan when Street Fighter Four came out. Let me go see if I can yeah. find it. <laughs> yeah. He's gonna go get it. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Fight sticks were too specific to fighting games, so I mean, yeah, I don't know if you would consider that a controller, but yeah. Oh, yeah. The only thing that drove me nuts was thing. back in the uh, Genesis days, where like Mortal Kombat would be out, and then they had Street Fighter, but your controller was only three buttons, and I had to go oh, to the five to six button right. controller. Just yeah, to I go forgot play about that. that. <laughs> I completely oh my God. forgot about that. I had that controller too. Yeah. That's that's yeah. It was like crazy. the it was like the X Y Z on top of A B C, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it all said, oh shit, I gotta go get one of those because I'm not gonna be able to play it with a fucking three button controller, dude. <laughs> there, there, were, there were some variations of the uh, Nintendo GameCube, too, that I forgot about as I'm looking at them. And, you know, I don't know why you would ever do that because the, the, that, that original one looks, it just feels so amazing um, that, that why would you? You know, like the one that looks like the PlayStation, they kind of tried to look like the PlayStation. Like, they should have never needed to do that because that, that original one just fits in your hand amazingly. Right. Well, actually, they, that was something they did. But that was a positive for the Wii when they came out with the uh, what do they call it? The Pro controller that looks yeah, more yeah, like an Xbox or whatever, so you could play GoldenEye and shit. Oh, it came with GoldenEye. I actually have the golden one. Yeah. Wow. What about Sega yeah, Saturn? The Switch right now is a Pro controller. I have that one. I use it to mostly play all my games on the Switch. So, yeah, it's the, it's the, uh, almost the same as the Pro controller, right? Or does it look a little bit different? Right. Have you guys seen the future? This is part of the future, guys. I don't know if you guys have seen these. Well, they're out, I believe. I think they're out. Have you seen that? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, oh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean... Just, if if I'm bringing the controller somewhere, um, no, I should be at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but, this, but seriously, this is amazing. Like, if your kids are on a trip and all the kids have phones now, I mean, you just... <clears throat> You pick it Fuck up. Fuck them. They can use their thumbs. But uh, no, I mean like, see, because like, this is a like, I, I, okay. So like with me, this is a game breaker for me. Like I don't play phone games almost ever unless it's yeah, a don't. game that specifically calls for scrolling. Like bowling, love it. Right. Or you love that game where you toss the thing in the trash can. Yeah, love that. With love that. Oh my god, that is my favorite of all time. Hell yeah. yeah, when you're just flicking the paper. Yeah. yeah swiping yeah. games, Hand love paper. it. Playing PUBG on my phone, hate it. Wait, you'd like Pokemon Go then? Because you do that with the Pokeballs. Yeah, I enjoy yeah, Pokemon. Too much. I like that Pokemon. I just don't have time to walk around and possibly get raped by somebody. Uh, you know, I just don't have that, I don't have don't that time. I, I don't think you have to worry about... Yeah, well, you haven't smelled my ass. No, I, oh. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> my God. I'm, uh, no, he's not kidding. I have not smelled his ass. He is 100% correct. <laughs> I want to clarify. He's not kidding. <laughs> 
Well, um, thank you, Stephen German, for all the super chats, guys. If you guys want a super chat about your favorite controller, let us know. I'll be keeping an eye on the super chat. But we're going to bring this in. But real quick, what I want to say is, uh, you know, I just, I like my weapon. I choose my weapon based on, like, depending the game. Like, like Diablo 3. Me and, me and Demon were playing Diablo 3 earlier. Absolutely have to have a mouse and keyboard. I cannot play Diablo on an Xbox or PlayStation. It pisses me off, actually. But, yeah. but on PC... It's an absolute click game for me. Must use keyboard. But right. if I'm playing Call of Duty or PUBG, I can't stand a mouse and keyboard. I just can't stand it. So it's it's I'm like... Actu it I'm actually the opposite to that because going back to what Leah was saying, I think ever since getting a PC, it's like shooters have to be mouse and keyboard. Like it's just so much better for me. Yeah. I don't know, man. See, I'm just more of a controller guy. I mean, I tried doing it on mouse and keyboard, but it's like, I don't know. I'm just too used to controllers at this point. And I just go with that and just change up the sensitivity. And I understand, like, what Leo was saying, you know, one setting too high or one setting too low. It's 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 hard Yeah, to I, almost, I almost wish, like, that because the games I've encountered, like, I almost wish there was sort of, like, um instead of like numbers on a lot of them you know like there was like a little bar that yeah. you kind of like move to the right. left and right because then maybe i could find one that would be like, like well that would work better for me bobby but would always say would, that he would always be like 10 isn't so enough he goes up to 15 yeah Ugh. yeah now they go up to 15 exactly yeah why right. not make it in why not make it absurd you know you have the power to do it why not make it just absurd you know or, or go to 100 just, fuck it yeah, yeah. <laughs> How like, much harder is that to program? Like, I don't know, if, if, but I assume not. I, me too. I, I feel like if you flick the stick just slightly, it spins you all the way completely around. Like he would. I mean, there you go, Bob. Um, I mean, I'm like so weird about the sensitivity <laughs> that even my mouse has sensitivity settings, yeah, and I yeah. use different. And like, I have to. I, I can click a button to change it, and I change it depending on the game I'm playing. Well, Same here. well, I'm yeah. pissed off about that too because that has a cap on on a PC, and my mouse sensitivity, as far as scrolling, is maxed out, and I want like two more levels well, up. Well, there's the mouse sensitivity, but then in game, I also oh, yeah. have my game's sensitivity adjusted. Right. So, like, it actually when I got this when I got this mouse, it actually fucked up playing The Witcher Three for a long time because the um, what is it called? Um, DPI. DPI, yeah, yeah. The DPI on the on the mouse was it, it like it it didn't it wasn't compatible with the settings I had with what was in The Witcher Three because it, it so so it was making it so like when I scrolled to the side or looked around it was jittery, so I had to like end up doing like all these different setting changes or whatever. I ended up getting it working, but um, but yeah, I don't know. Like it's, so it's like weird. So it's, I'm weird with sensitivity. For the the mouse and stuff like that, but um, so so it's like when it comes to controllers and games like that, there just tends to not be one that work wor that will work for me. Okay, I don't know what this means, but Stephen German just said Cronin is afraid of exercising his wallet. Does, what does, it, does anybody know what that means? I don't. <laughs> what the he hell is? Money. I mean, I guess he's saying I'm afraid of using money. Right? Like what? Why? I mean, I'm kind. Of, I mean, I. <laughs> I mean, Why? I. I mean, I am a little bit. I, I'm like really stingy right now because I'm trying to get the house, and you know what I mean. I live off of my shows, but uh, I don't know what. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that means. It's bad enough that you can't actually understand them, but now he's actually texting, and it's even worse. Yeah. So now <laughs> I'm, my life is really confused. Okay. Well, in we, all caps, we could totally do. Yeah. In in, in all caps, like what like. Like Cronin is, is afraid to exercise. exercise. Like, uh, like I don't know. <laughs> he it's probably like, stop yelling uses, at me, damn it. He probably uses speech to text, and the uh. fucking dragonfly is just like, fuck it. I'm just typing exactly whatever the <laughs> fuck he's saying. <laughs> 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 Oh, man. We had a good episode last week. If you guys missed it, um, definitely listen to that. It was mostly about PUBG. We're, I'm trying to create a PUBG-only stream uh, or podcast, so that may be what that is. That's why I called it a pilot for FYI. I didn't call it a pilot to be like, we're having a pilot because we're like TV and shit. Huh? No, it <laughs> was lit. just... Yeah, it was, I didn't pull a Justin Bailey and create an overly hyped name uh, and fire the, oh, fire the production <laughs> staff or whatever. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I love Bailey. Uh, Steven German now says you're afraid of what your wallet looks like in real life. 
<laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what in the it's world? It's the one that says bad motherfucker on it. <laughs> <laughs> He's oh, going to keep like super chatting you till he gets his point across. Is that Pulp Fiction? We'll be here all, yeah, all night. Okay, I thought so. I mean, I've only seen the movie about a million times, so. <laughs> Which one's your wallet? One that says badass motherfucker on it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that, man. I might watch that now. Uh, Steven, <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you, Steven. Anyway, I don't know what you're saying, man, but you're out of your mind. <laughs> I love you, Steven, though. Thanks for the super chat. Um, uh, is okay. Steven German Andy Kaufman in disguise? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> It's after, a possibility, man. After the cancer. Um, oh, he is the cancer. <laughs> wow. So the... Wow. Um, me Sorry, and, uh, back to controllers. No, no, well, so I think we're done with... I mean, I think we're done with controllers. I tried to bring it, yeah. you know, bring up the Xbox original, which was... Because it really was, like, one of the most polarizing controllers besides... Well, I guess not really, because N64 was pretty weird... Maybe, it was. <laughs> maybe they maybe they thought well N sixty four worked you know so you know what's going to be worse than like three harp like tr the trident fucking like I mean like what you know I mean like what is who's going to hate this and maybe they thought you know Dreamcast because Xbox took a lot from Dreamcast like I remember yeah, they, they took the whole internet system from them like the way they were connecting to the internet but but I believe that didn't maybe Dreamcast they thought they were going to go in through like land like phone dial up. But Xbox was like, we're going to take what you're doing, but we're going to set it up for DSL. They like, did have something eventually later on to set up for broadband, but it was already like a little too, too little late. Too late. Yeah. Because they started out with 56K and was like, oh. Oh, yeah, okay. Just hearing that damn sound. <laughs> yeah, because like, no. you could, at the time, you could even play better over the internet on PC. Like, you could play Command and Conquer yeah. Red Alert online and just tear it up. And then you play something simple on Dreamcast and it you couldn't even do it. There was no... Online, I don't think it. They ever. And you know what the the real problem was? Dreamcast didn't have the single player support and trust because that's the same problem Nintendo has right now, or at least I haven't played the Switch. But Nintendo's connection back to Wii sucks online. It's the online experience just isn't as great as Xbox and PlayStation. It's gotten a lot better. I can say. Yeah. First time. yeah Wait, did you say you haven't played the Switch? I've seen it. Yeah, I've uh, dabbled at friends' places for a couple minutes, but not in depth. So you know. haven't oh my played. God. You haven't played Zelda? Uh, probably for like half an hour. It's awesome. Hour, wow, dude. I mean, it's great. I love Zelda, dude. It's sick. Yeah. I gotta tell you, I haven't played. I haven't really I, played it. I've watched Leah play it a ton, and I, I just gotta say that, like, I, I know that I haven't played it, so this doesn't make sense for me to say. But you know, w when they, if you were to make a list of the top ten games of all time, that game has now made it on that list. I think. And that's yeah. It's been a so. lot. I've. I've been waiting a long time for a game. Maybe to, not th for like a Zelda game to be like, um, like oh, I love Ocarina. Ocarina is like, mm -hmm. oh, it's always going to be one of my favorites, if yeah, not my favorite. favorite. So what do you? And think? I've been waiting for a game to come close to rivaling that, like a Zelda one, along you know, like terms of Zelda. This does. This had that same. I got the same amount of fun out of this as I did that one. Like, like I like Majora's Mask, except I didn't like the three day reset. I like Twilight Princess um, a lot. Right. Um, I didn't like Skyward Sword. Was not really a fan of that. Brian, did you say um, you think, I think I this? Fucking played that. Brian, you yeah. say you think this should be a top ten or uh, no of all time? We're talking all time. I still put a uh, link to the past over Breath of the Wild. I don't know. That's just it could be nostalgia reasons, but a oh, link to uh, the past. Link to yeah. the past. Yeah. yeah. Link to I don't the know. Past that was the that was the original. Was great. That was Definitely the original. Like the you know, you you go and you can just literally do. Any order dungeons you want. It's I mean, obviously. Sorry, go ahead. No, yeah, obviously, Breath of the Wild kind of like perfected that, but like I don't know. For me, it was always Link to the Past. You can't beat it. Yeah, Link to the Past is like the perfect combination of complexity and simplicity. Like the variety of weapons and the amount of dungeons. What is it? Not the uh, the three in the light world, and then the nine in the dark world, and the fucking the size of the world. Yeah, but it's yeah. still pretty simple controls. It's you know you can run on the directionally, but up to left, right. Simple combat, simple throwing yeah. items. It's it's simple, but just a big sprawling game nonetheless. That's always going to be the best for me, I think. Mm -hmm. In the yeah. same vein, Super Mario, but the three is one of my favorite. That's probably my second favorite game of all time. Same thing. It's pretty simple platform but long enough customizable well let me close up with um uh, basically uh
Oh, let me mute my mic by accident. Um, yeah, no, let me let me close <laughs> up with we, we hit all these controllers. Um, you know, next week we're going to have another topic. Um, you know, next week we're really going to be talking about uh, we're, we're going to be giving our top, you know, sort of our top games of all time. So we'll, this is sort of a tease into that, I think. Um, so next right. week we'll be talking about that. But um, to, to, to sort of close on something, I wanted to talk about the Battle royal craze that's going on and what we think about this. It's very... It, to me, it's, it's an like, epidemic. It, it, yeah, it's an <laughs> epidemic. Yeah, it's it's, it's out of me, control now. That's basically what it is. Well, to me, it's reminiscent of just the shooter phase of like everything's got to be a shooter and whatever. And and now it's like everyone's everything's going to have battle royale in it. And you know, I get it because I really love PUBG and Fortnite's pretty fun. And some people love Fortnite better than PUBG. And and and, and everyone can't help but say it. Like we all said it before we. It was even announced like eight months ago. We all said, or six months ago, we all said, you know, oh man, I hope they put. I'd like to see this in the new Halo game, or I hope they put this in the Call of Duty. They're gonna put this in Call of Duty, you know. And everyone, <laughs> you know, everyone's just saying it's gonna be in everything. And now that they're doing it, it's kind of like you're rolling your eyes at it. Well, you remember if you remember what was it? Uh, EA's press conference for E3. Yeah. And they're sitting there with Battlefield. And they announced, we got the mode you've all been waiting for, Royale. And then everyone was starting to, like, boo, because they're like, no, we <laughs> want freaking Battle Royale, damn it. Yeah, like, right. fix the actual game first, like, before you fucking start adding other shit. I don't know. Well, They what, keep messing that series up, in what, my opinion. What they should have said is, you know, they, they should have really just said all the stuff that was going to be in it. Like, stick, like people need to... I, I think all these gaming companies and all these games would have been fine if they sort of said, hey, guess what? You know, Battlefield's going to have this and that, and we're going with this right. story, and, and stuck to their own thing. But then at the very end, mentioned that... And, uh, you know, to, to, to put the icing on the cake, we're also going to have an option for a Battle Royale mode for you people that want that. It will be very interesting to see our game in that type of world. And then move on. That way, you know, they got us excited about... We know they're staying the way they are, but then they throw that out. But most of them, it felt like, especially EA, of course, especially EA, led with that. Like, this is what we're doing. And it was like, oh. You know, and I, and I, and I think that they're starting to find out really quickly that, I don't know, it's like people lo like PUBG and like Fortnite, but now are sort of being like, nah, but we don't want that in the other games. Although, I do remember we were excited for it in Red Dead when we heard about Red Dead having it. We got pretty excited about that. Yeah, it was it was something exciting. And then you look at Fortnite and the, the craze that it has been because it's a free-to-play game. Yeah. And now you got all the little kids sitting there playing it instead of playing Minecraft anymore. They all go play Fortnite. Yep. And you look at, say, Call of Duty, which is uh, coming up this fall, and all the people are like, well, why would I want to play a game of Battle Royale when I can go play, instead of spending $60, I'm going to go go play a game for free. So they're all saying, well, why isn't this free or why isn't that free? They're making a big deal about the Black Ops Pass and all this bullshit. Yeah. So it's like, well, I don't want to spend up to $100 when I can go play for free. Well, so, do you know how, I, honestly, what I would do if I was um, Call of Duty or if I was anybody, probably Call of Duty especially, I would actually okay. release Call of Duty's new game the way it is and have it be the way it is. But I would yeah. also, I would, re I would release their own Battle Royale game separately. And I'm not kidding. I, I agree. With Microtrans, I would just copy the, copy the, uh, the plan. Yeah, copy Fortnite. You know what you do? It, you, like a year and a half later, you do it like Halo 3 ODST. Yep. Like exactly. all this Battle Royale mode and all the DLC that's already come out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's it's almost that's as if like all these companies, because it's hard to believe, because what, Battle Royale didn't get popular to what, like the start of December when PUBG came out? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's hard to believe that all these companies like knew Battle Royale was going to be, you know, get popular. So now that you see like Black Ops has it, you know, Battlefield has it, Red Dead Redemption, you know, these are going to be like shitty Battle Royale versions. Yeah. So yeah. I don't think you're going to start seeing good effort put into battle royale modes in these games until like you know maybe a year or two from now because it's just hard to believe that like oh we knew this was going to happen so like you know you battle see, royale you guys go like call of duty should be working on it separately like and being and having it be third person and first person similar to PUBG, kind of copy that sort of idea and and work on building it just as its own thing a separate team whatever you got to do and call it call of duty battle like that would and sell it separately it would be really a good idea i think that way for them but, well, you with know. the sad part for them not having a campaign, I think really hurt them, 
and they had to just scramble to put something in, and that's why they have that mode blackout now, which is the Battle Royale. So just to kind of make up for something. And there's still kind of a lack of content on day one, even though I pre-ordered the game, but it's like, you know, I'm more of a zombies player when it comes to Call of Duty. And, you know, it, it really fits for me. I mean, Battle Royale is like something like, okay, maybe I'll go to this once in a while and go sit and play it. But I kind of like, you know, you always kind of go back to Fortnite because the free-to-play model has really worked for them, even though they're still in early access. It's like you think at this point, at least just call it the full game already. And, you know, the kids love it. And now, but so many people at this point, they're, you know, these kids or whatever, and their parents are all freaking spoiled as hell. They're like, oh, I'm not going to pay $60 to go give you a game. But I do agree. I think that the, the Battle Royale should have been something separate. And I was hoping maybe they were going to do one for Halo and that they would make it like a separate mode or a, a separate game. I think it would have been a better idea. I so. hope that they do do it in Halo, but yeah, I, I don't know how that's going to work. But I am worried about it being oversaturated because if, if they're not yeah. good and exciting and different, you know, you're just going to roll your eyes at it like, oh, it's still funner to do Fortnite because you build, and it's still funner on PUBG because it's so weird and random. Um, right. where, where the charm isn't there with maybe Halo and Call of Duty. Because Halo and Call of Duty are so polished at this point that it just feels like you're sort of playing a bigger version of their Slayer or Deathmatch in a way. Right. But but also, the reason why they're probably all announcing this, like you said, this is a good point. I forget if it was Moon or Troy that said it. I think it was Moon um, a second ago. And he said, well, how do they already have this made in December? Well, I think it's easy because I think it's just the code of, you know, everybody gets entered into it. Just allow everyone to be entered into a game, and it's every man for themselves or group up teams. That's all just coding probably. And like simple, well, it's all coding all the time. But I mean, right. it's probably decent, like pretty easily done coding. Um, and then yeah, in Halo, it's just extreme multi-team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then and then yeah. it's and then it's just let the game string up the numbers the way the way it happens. But yeah, if there's no charm to it, where PUBG, it's like these maps are specifically built. This thing is specifically mm -hmm. built for this mode only. And it, it feels more interesting that PUBG's going to add some different versions of it more than like maybe halo doing it it's it, it's like they're going backwards whereas PUBG, like when they add this new war mode that's going to be fun as hell i feel like and these other modes i came up with things like four corners i made up something last week where i thought that was cool kind of like a you know king of the hill king of the mountain thing in that game right. i feel like introducing other play styles from other games in PUBG feels like fun and fresh and different whereas like call of duty doing what PUBG does feels like I'm concerned. I don't know if that will work yet or not. It's weird because they're doing it where it feels like they're the blackout mode that they have is more of a nostalgia type of thing because they're taking all the maps of the multiplayer mm -hmm. and just kind of taking those familiar maps and mash them together. Yeah, and that's that's kind of weird to me. But I mean, I'm kind of down for that because I'm used to a lot of those maps. And whether it was zombies or whether it was a, a multiplayer map, they're putting them together. And the option to play is land, sea, and air. I think that's you know, it's something interesting. Who but do you, it does feel a little bit of like a nostalgia thing because like, oh, you could play as any character or whatever. It's like, oh, okay. So it's, it's one big nostalgia act, basically. Who do you think will and take it over? it just feels like something they're just mashing together quickly. Yeah. You know, well, no, you're right. We have something. To say, oh, we got Battle Royal too. I mean, yeah, that's, I mean, that that's my question is now is like, mm -hmm. who do we think is going to take over that third spot? I know that H1Z1, uh, you right. know, the guy who made PUBG made H1Z1 or whatever and, H1Z1's on PlayStation, so that's you know the PlayStation exclusive for this time being, and PUBG's on Xbox, right. and Fortnite's everywhere. But you know, and, and by the way, PUBG's mainstay is PC. PUBG's amazing on the PC. Oh, yeah. But yeah. who's going to be the third guy? Who's going to be the one that comes in? Is it going to be? Is it going to be three four three Microsoft? Is it going to be Call of Duty? Is it going to be? You know, somebody Rockstar. else is Destiny going to have it? Rockstar, you think? What? Every yeah. episode, Red Dead. Red Dead, you know, man. you know what? Well, I will say, before. I will say that um, Halo is kind of in an advantage right now because all of these games that are coming in with Battle Royale this year, Halo's not well. From what I was reading, it's not coming out till like another two years, so it has wow. a real advantage of like waiting to see. Okay, what's working for like this company? What's, what's working for that company? So they could really kind of just put together something and take what's successful from every company and put it into like you know their own. So I mean, I would probably say Halo has a good chance of like really 
doing their own thing with Battle Royale. It's now, possible. People are saying that Red Dead isn't going to have it now, but but it, I think if Red Dead were to have it, it's between Red Dead and Halo. I, I have some weird... To me, I'm, I think that Call of Duty would be the obvious one that it would work, but I don't know. It just feels like right now there's a cynical thing. Call of Duty's about to be where Halo was right. the last five years, I feel like. And I feel like Halo might be down for a resurgence finally after eight years or something like that. And But I think Red Dead is... When that comes out, man, I, I feel like that's going to sell. That's going to be the number one seller and maybe the top five sales of all time. You know, w maybe. We might be talking about that. I don't know. And if they have that mode and they do it right, that could really... That could be your number three. Possibly creep up higher than that. So we'll see. But, um, you know... Halo coming out in two years, isn't that kind of weird? I mean, because, I mean, is it going to be on the same console? Because won't they... I heard it's supposed to come out with the new Xbox. Yeah, it's going to be with the new one. Yeah. With, with like an Xbox 4? Um, Xbox 2? I don't whatever know. They whatever, they want whatever they call it. it. Because Microsoft's saying that they have more than one console planned uh, for 2020. Man. Wow. So, two different options right now. That's so weird. That's so weird. Is it just like an upgrade to this console? Is it a because it feels like right now that they're almost in that mode of like releasing updated versions of the current console more more and, and everyone has always kind of done that, but this right. feels like they're in some kind of different like DLC console. Like that's what we're kind of kind of like right phones. Now. Like when you look at the iPhones, like every year yeah. it's like iPhone seven, and then it's like the seven plus or something right. like that. Exactly, mm -hmm. and it's not like guess what brand new console like it's a whole new worked over thing. Because when they do that, then it feels like all the games need to change and engines need to be adjusted and things like that. Like every time they do that, like the, one of the most noticeable things is the, is the hockey games because like right. you know I mean or the the sports games. Like it feels like the engine changes a little bit. Like EA Sports two thousand seven hockey is jacked up it's the first year of the new gen and that game feels horrible but you get where they're going and you're like this is this is going to be cool but yet 2006 5 and 4 were 3 were awesome and then after that um you know the recent one 2015 that launched or whatever 14 for the xbox one Sucked. that game was screwed up it was like wow this is jacked up you know and it took them a few years to get back to it so that's always happens when there's a new a brand still new console. Back. yeah it still hasn't felt the the, the greatest ever yeah because they said um from what i've been hearing is that the models that they're going to have for the new xbox the, and these are just rumors so you know take them with a grain of salt but the first one that they said was just going to be like a base model but it's going to be like the xbox one x is right now and the other model will be the premium one, but both of both consoles they're trying to shoot for the 4K 60 frames, so that's their goal. Yeah, right now. yeah, 60 oh frames in general, I think, is yeah. like what they really want to hit because it's supposed to be the standard. It should have been the standard with this generation, but I agree, I agree. You know, going back to the controller thing, look at what Casey Yates posted on Twitter. What oh the hell God. is that thing? <laughs> Check out this gun Xbox controller. Wow, dude, <laughs> that is so. I'm like looking at Megatron or something for a second. Yeah, <laughs> that looks like a controller for like the PC back in like 1994 or six. Yeah, like one of those crazy controllers you could buy because there was so many. Like you know, you could probably do a whole show on that. Like like every version of a PC type of controller, right? Because there was so many companies, so many people that you know within probably 1984 you know, you could go to the joysticks too, but 1985 to, to 1999, there were so many handheld controller types made that it's that it's whacked out. It, oh yeah, here's okay. There's the Mad Cats. Look at that. See, people are tweeting me really good photos. So here's. <laughs> so on the bot, this isn't even the one I have. I have a I have a crazier one than this. Oh my god! But this is the big version of the Mad Cats. Yeah. But I have a I have an even different one that's more. But yeah, that's basically it. But I have a bigger one. It, this is huge too on the screen. It kind of looks manipulated. It looks like the small one. It's not. That's just a big friggin' thing. <laughs> like it's really. As just I said, big. I had to get used to it, you know. And it, it was it was really weird for me in the beginning to yeah. get used to that controller. Even though I was using a Dreamcast controller, but um, when I got started using to that one, it was like 
it was a very rough adjustment, but then eventually I got used to it a little bit when I was playing Halo, and then then the smaller controller came along, and I was like, okay, well, I'm just going to get the smaller one and say, fuck it. So. Yeah, you know, the I was so excited to play that that I just didn't care. Like, I just, I ended up, yeah. I ended up loving it and had no problem with it and whatever I'd else. I'd stay up all night and sit there playing Halo. It's ridiculous. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was, I mean, my life was over when Halo... <laughs> <laughs> there were, uh, when Halo was out, my life was over. When Diablo Two was out, my life was over. Uh, when World of Warcraft originally like was out, or it was like Warcraft or something, it was different. Uh, I forget what it was called. But it was called what was it called? Lee, do you remember? There's a bunch of Warcrafts, but then WoW is the like the multiplayer mm -hmm. online open world one. It was probably 2000. Like there's, there's I think there's like three Warcrafts. 2003. Something like that. 2003, um, yeah, I think that, yeah, 2003 would probably be World of Warcraft. Mm, yeah, so it was. World of Warcraft. <laughs> World of old times. It's going to be. The game uh, is scaring me, man. The time that time forgot. <laughs> <laughs> it still sucks you back in. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm playing, I'm playing it right now. Oh. I do. I have, <laughs> I, someone I'm said like I have a big one. alternating between Diablo and that. I'll, I'll be playing Diablo with D-Moon after this, or uh, if he's up. I'm still, like, really angry with uh, Diablo and them. Uh -oh. The goblins. <laughs> I heard the story. It's not just the goblins. It's like, um, they... Th when the Necromancer came out, I came back to the game. I was excited about the Necromancer. I found a build I liked and everything, and then they just decided to nerf it for, like, no fucking reason. Well, and there was I something weird about going into the game. There's an 80% chance there's a goblin or two. And then leaving the game and then going back in that was there and going back. So, like, there was something wrong about the spawning, but it was like, come on, just leave it in the game. It had been there forever, and it was only, it only got brought to anybody's attention because some stupid fuck idiot brought it up on a fucking <laughs> YouTube video when he knows. Because, like, Diablo had tweeted out his stuff before. Yeah, he was so, like, like, they don't even know. I'm just, well, he, remember he said, like, they don't listen to me. And it was like, what are you talking about? They tweeted you yesterday, and you said, thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah, so he, yeah. he fucking knew. It was his fault because everybody else kind of... He's like, other people talk about it. And it's like, they kind of like slipped it in in the yeah. middle of videos. They didn't make like a whole video with like it on the screen, like super secret goblin run and like fucking tweet it out and everything else. It's like... Yeah, he really... You, you fucking... It was him. It was 100%. And you know what? He took the fucking video down after we like gave him shit yeah. like a day later. <laughs> so he fucking knew it. Do you remember the video he made the next day? This is so funny because guys, he did this because of us. It's so oh, weird. such a liar yeah i said like <laughs> i said you're such a dickhead and everything and then leah leah really called him out but um we were the only ones like in fact we got attacked by his fans and i like the guy you know what i mean i do like the guy but i did i called uh, him out i said dude ruined it i said dude you're gonna get it taken <laughs> away for all of us hey fucking some of my moron. best friends are fucking idiots yeah this dude's a moron though you know that the game creators are fucking like retweeting you and following your shit so you're gonna like it's super secret he goes my Except listeners looking he goes my listeners deserve <laughs> to know and all this stuff and it was like well whatever but yeah you just took it away from all your listeners you fucking tard. That's, that's what i said like, to him my God. but the uh, the next day the next day he made a video like I am getting death threats, and it is yeah, just... death threats. He wrote the, Tommy NC. No, he legitimately wrote, made this whole video about getting death threats about, now, guys, if you want to criticize me for that, go ahead. It is your decision, but this is unacceptable. And like, I people, feel like you're putting on a Vince Russo voice. No, that's kind of his yeah. voice. <laughs> no, I swear to God. No, that's no. I, I'm pretty sure I'm nailing his voice. I know, it just sounded like Vince Russo. But, but here's the thing. Then a bigger YouTuber who, who's known for Diablo 3 is Riker. And he's got like hundreds of thousands. And he made a video like about this guy like getting hate. And he goes, it's unacceptable over this and blah, blah. And he went through the whole thing. And I was like, oh my God, this is all because of me and Leah's comments on this guy's video. This is so <laughs> weird. And I love both the guys too. Like, so I'm like, this is so bizarre. Yeah, well, stupid Riker went and like made the video. It's like, you don't even like have him prove the death threats. Yeah, that's what I show said. Me I said, sort of show proof. me the death threats. Because we didn't give you it. I didn't I was just we like, you're an idiot, it. and you ruined this for everybody. Like, Nobody. why would you do this? Nobody death threatened him. He just yeah, did it for the, seven days. Like, I know yeah, he did it. Yeah, because then he came back, <laughs> and he was like, he's like, oh, my fans deserve to know. I was like, you just ruined it for your fans. I was like, I told him, I was like, you know that uh, Blizzard tweets out your your um, your streams and follows you and clearly sees what you're doing and your video and like tweets yeah. out your videos and everything else. 
so you go and make a video about something that's a secret and he didn't respond to me after that he ended up blocking me yeah he, so. he even said I'll, to just, me, I'll like, just take that as is a, I'm this right an exploit <laughs> or is it not an exploit I don't know but it's there like right you listen to his voice you'll hear, oh wait a minute I don't even know if you can hear sounds uh, can you hear this? Start your season. Yeah. Now, yeah. once you have oh your God. challenge rift done and jump in the game, the first thing you're going to want to do before you do anything else is run over to your follower, preferably your Templar or maybe even your Enchantress. It's the Goblin Run. It's the best Goblin Run there is. And they told oh me <laughs> that I've got, they gave me death threats. And folks, if you want to criticize me, I have no problem with that whatsoever. I have a regular job. I go to my job. I take care of my kids. And to come on here and to receive death threats is unacceptable. If he received a and, death threat, it wasn't from us. And he didn't. I don't think he got and one. And he didn't prove it because we were asking him. For yeah, we asked him. I said, didn't. hey, can you tell me who it was? Because people mess around on here. I want to corroborate it and see, uh, see if it's the same uh, person that I know. And I even like I made that up. And he just was like... No. This is like, oh man, you. But but his channel's killing it now. It's like the guy's killing. It. I'm like this. Oh man, because once I sort of see that somebody's fake like that, it drives me nuts after that. Right. Because I'm like, oh my god, dude, you're so full of it. But anyway, we really got to wrap this up. I really appreciate everybody being here. This was a great. I love talking about that. We could talk another three hours probably, but <laughs> no kidding. Let's go play PUBG instead. Oh yeah, Moon wants to play. We were gonna play Diablo, but yeah, we should play PUBG. I guess, Down right? PUBG. Yeah. All right. PUBG. I do want to play Diablo some more, but let's play PUBG. Um, oh, uh, D, uh, Brian, do you want to play PUBG? Uh, I would, but I got to get up for work early in the morning, ah. so I wouldn't be able to do it right now. That's okay. We'll hit you but, up the uh, next time. I would say in the next, uh, not this week, but the week after, I'm off all week, so we can definitely do PUBG and shit. All yeah. right. We'll do that. And um, Oh, yeah. We'll get off all next week. Let me say, too. Um, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Brian, you don't really ever plug your stuff. Why don't you plug your uh, YouTube? Because uh, uh, Himmel God's been doing some really good gaming. If you haven't heard his E3 breakdown, like it's so good, it's really good. Like it's it's not even like it's not it's not somebody who just made a channel and he's just talking about whatever. Like he's very like you really had this shit broken down. Uh, what's the YouTube channel? Uh, it's YouTube.com slash BuzzKillerB. That used to be my old name back on uh, Dreamcast. So. Uh, never tell anybody that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> no Buzzkiller B is uh, that's a pretty cool name. Except for is that, um, the, uh, is that the initial B or is that the Bzz B? No, it was the initial B. So because uh, they wouldn't let me use Buzzkiller because that's how I was when I was oh. playing Quake. I was like, damn, you're a fucking Buzzkiller. Is that, that a is that a hard is that a hard R and killer or are you the Buzzkiller so to say? Buzzkiller. <laughs> no, it's it was the hard R man. <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. But uh, the yeah, hard man. R killer. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can catch D Moon streaming too. Uh, D Moon, if you want to plug that, I don't know if you're Twitch or YouTube. Catch him on stream. Yeah, usually I just stream random PUBG on PC videos. You can just follow me on D Moon as on YouTube. Yeah. And that's I, about it, Troya. Uh, yeah, I'm also on Twitch, so you guys can find me there too. So once in a while. <laughs> Well, I, you guys will be able to download this episode. If you're a patron, you can download this episode in audio. If you want, tomorrow, uh, maybe a little bit later, I'll have it up for you. Um, what else did I want to say? Um, we're, it's going to be going on iTunes at some point, too, I think, in, 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 as well. And it will be replayed on Twitch as well. I don't think anybody's really going to go there to listen to it, but it will be there anyway. And uh, that's it. I loved uh, what we did last week, and I really liked what we did this week. And next week, we'll talk about our favorite games of all time. That will be a mon monstrous uh, like yeah. thing. Uh, <laughs> same time, I guess, if that works. You know, you don't have to, sure. you know, some people may not always be able to be here, but, you know, we'll try to do it around the time everybody can be here. Sure. Somebody I'm said, in. do I have to be a patron of $30 or more, Joe, to do this podcast? Uh <laughs> <laughs> Well, said that, Steven. well, technically, there is a there is a tier on my Patreon where we do we, where I owe you a one on one, or we do our own podcast. You know, so there is a tier for that on there. It's not necessarily why D Moon and Himmelgod are here. They're really just here because they're gaming gamers. They know yeah. what we're talking about. Uh, but at the same time, like absolutely, like uh, it kind of kills two birds with one stone, I guess. 
but they didn't <laughs> they didn't ask to do a podcast with me i asked them to do this so they didn't even use their credit or whatever you want to call it you know and, and, and i don't do that to say like oh i'm god give me 20 bucks a month and i'll do a podcast with you you know that's stupid <laughs> it, it's more just like i don't have time to do a bunch of things so if you're really serious then there's a category but to be honest i mean if you're really good or you or you know you can have a conversation you know, as long yeah. as you can talk, you know, we'll you can be on the show. Just send me a message on Patreon or, or DM on Twitter if you want to talk next time, um, and we'll try to get it in there. And I may try to do even side gaming podcasts and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, so Stephen Terman's going to be sending his right away, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah if we ever have um, a, a loneliness and mental illness episode, all the viewers can call in. Oh my wow. God! What are you, Dave Rose? Sure. <laughs> Dave, Dave Rose went from saying like all your fans are idiots to like only some of the fans. Like now he has to backtrack. <laughs> I, I noticed temperate. You gotta yeah. feel it out. Well, well, I noticed that he was getting crap from the people on, on other shows Look, and stuff. Like saying, wait a minute. The thing I know, anyone that's listening to the gaming podcast right now are people that either call me Todd or make fun of my driving. So fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, you know, you're, oh, you, know. you're you do good. You're like 70% good, you know? I mean, really. I know. That. That, that's why I have to talk shit to the fans, because they don't know anything. I'm the smartest <laughs> fan in PUBG. I think we have that, that video that you guys, that, Joe, that video you showed, and uh, we were watching from uh, from Monetize This, where he's driving into the building that's not even there. Oh. I mean, that shit was great. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was at a power plant. I, still I lost it, dude, because I, I knew, because I had just done it the, the day before. So I was like, don't. Don't go in the building, dude. The PUBG, it hasn't loaded. I, I knew it wasn't there, but I just I couldn't stay with the opportunity of trying to run over a guy that was in the building. Can you imagine being that guy? You're in the building like, hey, I got a level three. Have a team. <laughs> <laughs> My, dude, I'm dying to know what it looked like, though. I'm dying to know if like the Jeep was appearing through walls to him like or not. You, like, it must have. Like, we were in the building. <laughs> <laughs> if he had walls, I'm sure I there was a video I saw today. It just it 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 just goes through. <laughs> oh really? Like it's just, yeah, it just, yeah, it just goes, just goes through. through. Oh, you you like fall in a pit, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he, yeah, yeah. he fell in random holes in the, in the map. Blew up. No, believe it or not, the hole that is like where the beam was. Like so they like the trees have roots under the ground. Why is that in the game? You know, like <laughs> you ever see it? random holes like that? I saw another video of the same thing today. Like a guy is sitting in the passenger seat, and he's he has an Xbox One X, but the guy driving doesn't. So from his point of view, they keep slamming into cars and buildings, and it makes contact. It's like ah, it freaks out, but then it just goes through because the guy driving doesn't have the buildings. Oh my god! Until eventually the building loads and it falls in a giant. It, it's weird. It falls in a crater. Like there's a hole in the ground. And right. as it falls into the crater, the building spawns above them, just like we did in that little one. But their jeep doesn't explode, so they just get trapped underground <laughs> forever. <laughs> well, uh, guys, listen, uh, this was great. I want to thank everybody, uh, Himmel God, for joining us. Yeah, check out his YouTube. You. D Moon, check out his. We got Troy. You, he never wants to plug check anything. Check us out now. What? Check us out now. Yeah, check us out now. Uh, come back, come back and listen to the next podcast. I want to thank all of the patrons. Everybody Fuck who you, I was here. Oh, I was gonna get to you. <laughs> I'm forgotten again. No, no, I was gonna get to you. You're last. Shh. Yeah. What? <laughs> I swear to God, you're me. next. Well, I was gonna say thanks to my beautiful wife who did all that work for our daughter Fucking today at the liar. dance thing. Joe, you're sleeping on the couch tonight. There we go. <laughs> That's all right. She's on the rag. Kids. They don't sleep anyway. She's on the rag anyway. <laughs> Oh my god! The fuck, dude! I remember when this guy used to come over uh, my buddy's house all the time and be like, "What are you doing here, Jim?" And he'd be like, "Ah, bitches on the rag." <laughs> <laughs> it's a typical day in Southie. But uh, listen, guys, again, thank you, guys. We'll see you in the next podcast. Again, thank you to everybody who super chatted tonight, even Stephen German, who said all that weird stuff that I'm still not really sure of what he was talking about. And uh, everybody who's a patron, you guys are the ones that made this free for everybody and made this, uh, you know, able to do this. So thank you. Come back next week for episode two. And at some point, this will go on the gaming YouTube channel, but we still can't have Super Chat over there. So I figured do it over here so people will be a part of it. We're going live on Twitch right now uh, to play some PUBG. So if you guys want to join us, we're live on Twitch right now. So join us over there. We'll see you next time. I'm driving. <laughs> Enjoy driving.